we know that he is with us. For he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be there to the end. I thank God that we serve a God like that. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Church, the Body of Christ at 764 Townsend Boulevard, Dover, Delaware. We thank those that are actually here in our parking lot as well as those that might be joining us on Facebook Live. Welcome again, amen? amen. Praise amen. God. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. For the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. He woke us up this morning and we are here because of his grace. Hallelujah. Who knows that we serve a big God. So we're going to give him big praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Join us as we praise and worship our God through song today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for he's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
God. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. That is the big God that we serve. So why would he not do big things for us? Amen. At this time, I'm going to call Sister Beth to come up and um, render prayer, followed by selection from Sister Zania. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for who you are, God. I thank you that you are big. In fact, you're um, beyond what we can fathom, what we can even um, think, Lord. And, and as they were singing, Lord, I was thinking, um, yes, you're big and you do big things. And for some um, that are in the sound of my voice or that are listening, Lord, maybe the big thing for them is not what the world sees, but the deep things in the heart, Lord, that only you can touch and heal. And so, Lord, I pray right now that you please would come into those deep places in us, Lord, that so desperately need you, Lord. You are the answer. You're really the only answer. And Lord, we just ask you to come. Have your way. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, Lord. You are good and loving and faithful and forgiving and true. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. We welcome you, Lord, and we pray you be glorified. You be lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, family. I will be coming from Psalms 119, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, Blessed are they that are perfect in the way, who walk in the law of Jehovah. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, that seek him with the whole heart. Yea, they do know unrighteousness, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us thy precepts, that we should observe them diligently. Oh, that my ways were established to observe thy statutes. Then shall I not be put to shame when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will give thanks unto thee with a righteousness of heart, and when I learn thy righteous judgments. Amen. 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 Come on, let's put our hands together for the word of the Lord has gone forth. At this time, we're going to continue our praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve an intentional God. We just said that he's big. Amen. But he's Amen. also intentional. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
show, amen. But I, I'm glad that we serve a God that understands our language, when we're, especially when we're calling out to him. And when we're saying to our God, Lord, I want more of you. I want more of your covering. I need more of your safety. I need more of your provision, Lord God. I just need more of you. So whatever that looks like, Heavenly Father, give us more. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you.
testimony. That we understand that he's going to give it all to us. Amen. But are we willing to surrender it all and to give it all to Jesus? Amen. The keeper, he is the one that was right there when God was making heavens and the earth. Amen? Amen. He was right there. So he has the ability to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can even ask or think. So for that purpose and for that reason alone, are we willing to give it all to Jesus? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. If you're willing to give it all to Jesus, put your hands together. As our praise and worship team takes their seat, again, I just want to thank everyone that is here today. Whether, again, if you're in here in our, our parking lot at 764 Townsend Boulevard over Delaware, or you're listening to us by Facebook Live. We welcome you for joining us here again today. So who is the church, the body of Christ? Who are we? We, we rely on the scripture coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Our core values are love, evangelize, disciple, and give. Our mission is to proclaim the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching the kingdom of God. So again, thank you for coming here today and joining us here in our, our, our worship service. It is so nice to see uh, returning visitors and, and, and of course our regular saints and, and friends. At this time, I just want to acknowledge that we have some giving opportunities. Uh, you can give online through PayPal at tctbocinc at yahoo.com, or you can mail your tithes offerings to P.O. Box 991, Dover, Delaware, 19903 is the zip code. Or if you're local here, and if we are here, and you can just drop them off. As I've said um, in the last few weeks, Pastor Christopher Hall, our senior pastor here, have um, charged us um, to continue in our, our missions agenda. Although we cannot travel as we've done in years past overseas. And uh, he's charged uh, the ministry to give $1,000. And so far, we have $575 remaining in that $1,000 charge. So if you have not given yet, uh, and if God is laying it on your heart to give over and beyond your tithes and offerings, and if you want to give to our, our missions effort here, um, you can still give through PayPal or mail it off, but just signify mission for them, okay? Thank you very much. Um, as we are going on, we are going right to the word. Is that okay? Amen. Give Pastor Christopher Hall a hand clap of encouragement as he comes to render the word of God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, community. Praise the Lord, all forms of media that are joining us. We do want to give God the honor and the glory and the praise because we serve a great God who is greatly to be praised. One thing I love about our Lord and our God is that he's good all the time. When I look back over my life, and I think about uh, the things that I've done and the many situations, circumstances I've been in. One thing I can reflect and at the end of the day say with my mouth is hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For not leaving me in the pit, but rather pulling me out of the pit and saving me. 
Not because of my good, but God reached down in the depth of the pit and met me right there in my sin. I'm so grateful and thankful to God that we serve a God that is not waiting for you or I to get it right. But God is, is willing and able to save. And guess what? He has made it so very easy that it is by faith through grace we're saved. Not of works, lest any man should boast, but that it is the gift of God. Can somebody give God a hand, hand clap or a hallelujah shout for the greatness and the goodness of God? I want to share with you very, very briefly um, a short sermon entitled A Lifestyle of Repentance. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, we do want to praise you. We want to honor you. We want to thank you for saving us. We want to thank you, Lord God, that your, your salvation is just not something that was yesterday, something that we did last week or last month years ago but every single day is a day of salvation that you are a living God and every minute, every hour every day that I live and breathe and have being that you are about saving me and Heavenly Father just not saving me Lord God but saving anyone and everyone that will call on your name so for that, we want to say thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this message will go out into the world and that some soul will be encouraged to come to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and as Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. When I talk to you about a lifestyle of repentance, I want to talk to you and encourage you that God wants you to be saved. But one of the methods, one of the principles of salvation is a repentant heart. A repentant heart. And I don't want to shake nobody, and I don't want to scare nobody, but I want to encourage you. Two things in this world certainly for show sure enough is true. One, there is a God. And two, it ain't you. <laughs> Don't forget that. My God is holy. Our God is righteous. Our God is good all the time. But the scripture reminds me that me as a pastor, as long as I'm in the flesh suit or the suit of flesh and I'm wearing these sneakers and these jeans and this t-shirt, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of that sin is death. But I want to encourage you that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. And today I want to give you a key, a principle to just not being saved but maintaining your life and it more abundantly. Jesus Christ in John 10 said, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly to the full. I want to tell you that God wants you to bear much fruit. God wants you to experience much joy much peace, much happiness. But you need to make sure that you are leveraging this principle that I'm going to share today. And that is that you must have a lifestyle from the inside out of repentance. A lifestyle of repentance. It's so very necessary that the word of God and the God of the word go beyond just your uh, your suke man, your so-called being, beyond your personality, beyond what I see, but on the inside of your heart, 
the inside of your mind that the way that you tick has got to be changed. And the way that it's changed is that it comes to a time where you, you've got to make a decision. And, there, and it comes to making a, a perpetual decision that from this day forward that I'm going to allow the God that saved me to govern, the God that saved me to have access to my will and my ways. See, when a man's ways please God, he's able to make his enemies be at peace with him. Huh? A risk repentive heart. A lifestyle of repentance is what we're looking for. I want to come to you from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Keep it real short. The scripture says, if we say that we have no sin, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And this is the part that I want you guys to take hold of. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to read it again for you because you might have missed it. If we say that we have no sin, you deceive we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to encourage you that our God is good and he's all about salvation. The scripture says that it's not my desire that any man perish but that all be saved. A few weeks ago I said that all means all. That means there is no uh, race, that there is no gender, that there is no political party, that there is no uh, uh, geographical location that God does not want to, by his Holy Spirit and by his uh, omnipotence and omnipresence and omniscience, there's no place or person that God does not want to affect with his holiness, his righteousness, the peace that passes all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, but that God wants all to be happy, all to have hope, all to have peace, all to take hold of the precious destiny that he has prepared for each and every single individual. I want you to, to believe in your heart this day that you are on God's radar. That today is a precious intersection with your heart, your mind, your body, and soul. And that God wants you to have everything he created you for. I'll share a story real quick. Once upon a time, I was on my way to North Carolina to visit my, my grandma and my folks. And uh, it was back in the day before uh, we had these smartphones that had apps to tell us where we're going and different things. And I used to go on the computer and I would print off a little map to tell me how to go and to come. And I'll, I'd get on the road and roll out with my family. So we going down to North Carolina. And uh, all of a sudden, I, I, I know that it should take me six, seven hours to get where I'm going. But I've been on the road about eight, nine hours. And uh, my family sleep, my wife sleep, and uh, I'm saying to myself, I know that something's wrong here. But my pride as a man would not allow me to stop and check the coordinates, stop and ask somebody smarter than me that's familiar with the area. My pride as a man would not allow me to stop and 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 turn around or, or get some better insight from somebody else. I needed to make a U-turn. I need to throw on the brakes and turn around and, and go back that direction. That's what repentance is. 
Repentance is when you shamefully and sorrowfully turn away from the direction that you're going because you understand and you and you know that something's going wrong and there's a there's a yearning inside the pit of your gut and there's something going on in your in intellect and it don't feel good in your emotions and it don't even feel good in the physical. You know something's wrong. But, and, but at that time, two things need to happen. One, you need to stop. You need to throw the brakes on. Just stop. Scripture tells me uh, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places to put on the whole armor of God that you may stand. That you may stand. Sometimes you can't do nothing but stop. Sometimes you can't do nothing but stop and just stand. Don't go backward, don't go forward, don't go to the side, side, but you got to stop. This is when you have a, a heart and a mind of repentance that the direction that you're going is not right. And even better than that, that the Holy Spirit, the, the mustard seed of faith that you have in your heart is convicting you and that God is knocking on the door of your heart and he wants you to stop and turn around. Not because he just wants you to get to where you're going on time or he wants you to get rich or he wants you and whatnot to, to get this or get that, but because God just loves you. God just loves me. He does not want me to be in error. He does not want me to be unstable. He does not want to be me to be psychologically, emotionally, or tangibly in lack. So the Holy Spirit convicts our heart and when the Holy Spirit convicts our heart, convicts our intellect, convicts our soul, our spirit, man, we need to stop. Don't let pride come in. Don't, don't let self uh, get in between of you and your destiny, but you got to stop. I'm talking about a lifestyle of repentance. Repentance is when you shamefully and sorrowfully turn away from sin. Turn away from the direction that you're going and turn to God. Turn to God and start walking to him. Scriptures tell us that God says, if you draw nigh to me, then I will draw nigh to you. I want you to know when we talk about repentance, we're talking about repentance from sin. Sometimes and whatnot, people call themselves repenting but really is they wish they had not got caught <laughs> they wish they had not been seen or they wish that the sin that they was in was not so uncomfortable or they had not got sick or had not got in prison or had not got into trouble see sin has consequences sin puts you in inappropriate circumstances and guess what? Just because it's uncomfortable for you for the moment don't mean that you have the conviction of the Holy Spirit and that you are in repentance mode. Repentance is when you understand that what you're saying, what you're doing, what you're participating in is not in the perfect ordained will of God is not supported by the word of God, is not substantiated by the being of the of, of God or the God of the word. And for that reason alone, you make the decision that God, I've chose you to be Lord and to be Savior, and this day I cry out to you that I am sorry. Lord, have mercy on my wife. No, no, no. Lord have mercy on Rasul. He the one got me in this mess. Lord have mercy on my mom and my daddy. They neglected me. They abandoned me when I was a child. And that's the reason why I'm, in, I'm all jacked up. No. That's not repentance. That's pointing the finger. That's having other people trying to, you're trying to put the blame on other people, how people try to share and the misery and the suffering that you're, that you're in. They might have been some problem, but we used to sing a song back in the day that it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. This is the 
true repentance. This is the heart of repentance. And repentance of sin. Repentance of breaking God's heart. Repentance of snatching your hand away from God's hand. Repentance of having to do what you do in the dark. Because God is light and in him there is no darkness. So you have to revert to the dark places to get your stuff done because it's not light. Closing up. We don't want you to be sin sick or walking on eggshells about sin. But when you live a lifestyle of repentance, that means that this day as I'm preaching, I'm teaching, as I'm talking to you, that you can pray with me. That Heavenly Father, I want you to have access to my body 24-7. I want you to have access to my mind 24-7. I want you to have access to my time 24-7. And Heavenly Father, whenever it is that I shrug you off, I want the conviction of your Holy Spirit to give me a nudge so that I, I know I want you to be the barometer of my life and I want to, to be able to see that, that the, the, the spiritual engine is getting too hot. It needs to be cooled down. I want, to, I want to be able to see the spiritual barometer saying that there's not enough voltage. There's not enough power. There's not enough energy circulating through the system that something ain't right. And I want to be able to respond. I don't want to have a heart of stone. I want to have a heart of flesh where your Holy Spirit can convict me and turn me around and I answer and respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and instead of doing wrong, do right. Instead of turning away from you, turn to you that I may receive healing, that I may receive salvation, that I might get my joy back. I want my peace back. I want my happiness back. And I believe it's all in you through Jesus Christ. Verse 9, First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The same way you get saved with your mouth, guess what? You have a lifestyle of repentance by using your mouth. You must have dialogue with God. It must come out of your mind and out of your heart and, and come out of your mouth and have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your, your sorrows. If we confess our sins, the scripture says, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Unforgiven sin leads to torment. Unforgiven sins leads to disarray and chaos. Unforgiven, unchecked sins leads to separation from God and oftentimes leads from separation from mother and father, separation from husband and wife, separation from, from son and daughter. Unchecked sin leads to death. We don't want to create the essence of our being, but we want life in it more. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. God wants more to forgive us than he wants to condemn us. He does not want to destroy us. He does not want to give us a spanking. But he wants us to sit in his lap. He wants us in his bosom. And he wants to, to, to nurture us and develop us and shape us and make us and mold us into his image that we might let our light shine before men that they might see our and glorify our father which is in heaven amen? amen if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and this is the last part and we go on home faithful and just to forgive our sins and this is the part right here that 
I want you to understand that you can't do yourself. The scripture says, and cleanse us, and cleanse us from all business. You need to get put in the wash, the spiritual wash machine of Yahweh. You got to get put in the spiritual wash machine of the Almighty God. And guess what? Because you go back in the world and you up again, you get dirty again. You got to wash. You can't stand the wash machine. You need to have a lifestyle of repentance, a lifestyle of allowing the Word of God and the God of the Word to cleanse us, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I want to be in right standing with God. I want God to be able to promote me. I want to. I want to be the elect. I want. I want to be a friend of God. Amen. So when we're singing that song, it's not a vain song. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I wish I had a singing voice like people that sing that, but I want that to be true. I don't need to be going to church playing church. I don't need to be singing songs of worship playing a game. I don't need to be throwing no Bible thump or Bible toter just to make people believe that, that I have a, 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 a better way. I want to live a lifestyle of repentance and I want to be saved and I want to reach the highest height that God has preordained and planned for me in my life. Amen? Hallelujah. That is for me. That is for you. That is for your son and your daughter. That's for your mother and your father. That's for the, your friends and your That's for your enemy. God sent his son Jesus Christ to seek and to save those that were lost. Amen? And guess what? When we live a lifestyle of repentance, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we can ask or think. Amen? Give God a hallelujah shout. I want to live a lifestyle of repentance. And God wants us to get into this here lifestyle and be perpetually growing, perpetually maturing perpetually developing from glory from to glory from faith to faith. Amen? I want to pray over us and pray over all those that are, are listening. Heavenly Father, today I understand, today I get it that my sins, my shortcomings, my mistakes, my, uh, my, my blunders, that the things that I'm saying are not just against others. It's just not causing me to have dysfunction with others. But Heavenly Father, first and foremost, that my, my sins are against you. That my shortcomings and my blunders is, is causing you sorrow. And for this, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to help me, Lord. Deliver me, set me free, and cause my feet to walk straight and narrow. Make crooked places plain, rough places plain, crooked places straight. These things, Lord God, we pray and believe that Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, died on the cross that we might have life and it to the full. We pray and believe that we have received that this day. If we are in one accord and we are touching and agreeing, where two or more are gathered in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, the Holy Spirit is right there in the midst. We thank you for raising a standard against Satan, that he has no rights, no privileges to my mind, my body, and my soul. As I walk in repentance, that the glory of the Lord and his provision and his will his plan is in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you. Let the whole church say amen, amen, amen. Give God a hand. Um, we didn't do it last week, but last week we had a, a brother came up and rededicated his life to Christ. If you are here today, 
And the only thing you want to do is, is tell God and man that this is my day of renewal. This is my day of salvation. I want to take one minute and just want to acknowledge you. Anyone? Rededication of their life to Jesus Christ. All hearts and minds being clear. I'm going to ask you as we disconnect from our social media that you stay for one second. And if you would like to participate in communion, we will be coming around with communion. And also we will be taking our offering. Thank you so very much, Facebook and uh, Twitter and all of the social media, our website, uh, for support and, um, and for receiving the blessing and receiving the word of God and growing by faith through grace in Jesus Christ. God bless you.